hi. <laughs> Boom. Ah. We're on. We're on. Ah. Uh, you know, the, the, the timer that we have going uh, whenever we, we swap over here, it, um, it just automatically throws us, throws us into the soup. And, uh, you know, and, and, and sometimes that's just uh, a little bit shocking. So yeah, uh, yeah. welcome to Albert Soup. Welcome to another episode of Albert Soup. I'm one of your hosts. I'm Justin. Uh, and I'm Rich, host number two. Host number uh, two. Wait, I, I, I don't like that. That's a, there's a hierarchy. That's not how this goes. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm always careful to say, uh, you know, uh, I one don't of, use the word yes. one of the hosts. Um, yeah. Mm. You know, one of mm. our many hosts, because apparently we've added another right. one to the roster. Uh, you know, the occasional host, Don. That's true. That was our, that was, our variant host. <laughs> our variant host. That's right. Uh, so anyway, yeah, no. Uh, last week we had Dom here. He was fantastic. Uh, we also had a couple of fantastic guests. For those of you who are watching this later on, go back and check that YouTube video out. It's fantastic. Totally, totally worth checking out. So, gosh, that's exciting. Uh, so, folks from Paizo are doing yeah, some good stuff, <laughs> right? They were, they were, they were really, they really got into it with us too, and. Uh, I got to ask him, like, I, you know, the, I like to know the inner workings of things. And so th those are the kind yeah. of questions I, I, I like to ask. Um, and I had a lot of fun talking to them about both their favorite and their least favorite uh, parts of, of their job of being being designers for a place like Paizo. And mm -hmm. uh, it was it was fantastic. It was great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Very so, cool. Anyway, wow. while I was doing <laughs> that, Rich, while I was here, you know, entertaining the masses, what were you doing? Uh, <laughs> uh, we we uh, we t had an opportunity to uh, to take a journey, and we decided to do it. So um, we were visiting some some family, and uh, you know, busting some escape rooms up, um, <laughs> things like that uh, in New York City. New uh, York City. New York City. Uh, so <laughs> so you went to New York City to to do escape rooms. Uh, how, how were the New York escape rooms in comparison to the LA escape rooms? Okay, okay. I, I love escape rooms. I, I'm at the point where I have access to a spreadsheet that game, like uh, escape room designers, fill out with reviews about the different places. And uh -huh. so I've got a good idea of where to go in LA and a few places out in the rest of the country to go to. And we went to a place called, uh, I think it was called The Escape Game in New York. And they had two in particular, one called Playground and one called... Oh gosh, Gold Rush, that was it. And they were both highly ranked and we were really, really excited to try them out. So we, uh, we had a, a couple friends, we got them together, uh, decided to try out the Gold Rush. And it was incredible. Like when, when I say escape room, what, what are you imagining? Well, like what, what does that look like? How well, many so have you done? Um, I have done, I've done okay. escape room mm -hmm. one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, for our experience, it was kind of like we went into a bar uh, and we hung mm -hmm. out. And then uh, when our it was our turn, they called us back. Uh, they put us in the room. The room just was a door on the wall with a number on it. They put us in. When we went in, it looked like a different scene completely. It looked um, like a uh, uh, like, uh, God, like a cabin in a ship. And, you know, and there's all this stuff all over the place and we had to use the stuff to figure stuff out. And then we were able to unlock a door yeah. that looked that brought us into like what looked like the study area of a ship. And yes. we had to use that to unlock a bunch of stuff and use the map and yeah. use latitude and longitude. <laughs> and Yeah. Yeah. OK, that's good. That's good, because that is a step up in escape room design is the the additional rooms, right? Uh -huh. uh, you think it's just one room, but no, you know, you solve enough puzzles and something opens and you get access to somewhere else. This uh, this gold rush one, we started like outside mm -hmm. and, and we're solving puzzles. The door is locked to the cabin. It's kind of dark. We're in this forested scene. Uh, we have to like look around for animals and all sorts of stuff. It was really great. We had lanterns carrying around to like light things up if we wanted to. Um, they also let us know there was a brighter setting, but it was on this like flickering, like, you know, can candlelight basically. Yeah. Um, we eventually get into the cabin. There's more stuff to do in there, of course. And, uh, including like a shooting range in this one, there was, we had to like, we had, a, we had an air rifle and it was all attached to the wall. So, yeah, yeah. you know, nothing could happen. Um, targets way off in the distance that we have to knock down to get a code. And so... <laughs> Oh, it was wow. really fun. Like people, people trying it all out. And, uh, and one of our, uh, one of our friends, um, 
uh, decided was in the back saying like, can I, can I try it out? Can I try it out? And a little timidly, a little from the back of the room. And so the people who were on the, the air rifle didn't hear it. And we were like, get up there, get up there. And she's like, Hey, can I try Can I take a shot? Can I try it out? And immediately like hits one. And everyone was like, you got this. <laughs> take care of it. Um, it was so good. The, the, uh, fireplace opens up and we go down a slide like deeper down into the mine to find uh, all of our gold. It was awesome. <laughs> that that um, does sound awesome. That sounds It was really fun. Yeah. I'm I'm um I'm not the biggest fan of escape rooms, but but I've I've mentioned mm -hmm. before I'm not a huge fan of puzzles either. So it right. it it really didn't you know, it it didn't appeal to me. It was fun. I had a good time. Um I'm okay <laughs> at puzzles. Uh, the real champ was was surprising to us when we went. Uh, it, it was my sister. Uh, my sister, like, you, you know, because I think escape room energy, and this is just my one experience, so tell me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but I feel like escape room energy, you have to have a certain amount of reckless abandon in the way yes. that you, you go <laughs> about things. Like, there is no real, like, logical way to look at things. You you go in there and you flip everything over, Right. Um, right. You know, and that was my sister. Like she went in, she was crawling on the floor, looking under things, climbing on top of things, trying to fit things together that didn't fit. And um, I think I think part of that is I don't have that. Um, I don't have that kind of the, the, the right kind of curiosity maybe for it. Uh, or, 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 or the, the, you know, my brain doesn't quite work that way. So, you know, I, I didn't see it. Like one of the puzzles uh, we had a stick. And we had to wrap a uh, a belt around the stick, and then it all lined up to give us sure. the code. You know, so it, I good sky tool. Yep. Never, never, <laughs> never would have gotten that. Not in the you know slightest. I would have never figured out that mm -hmm. this belt with letters on it, uh, and this stick that's on the other side of the room go together, right? Yeah. You know. But oh, my, meanwhile, my sister's yeah. just like, hey, here, what if we try this? What? The? And I'm mm -hmm. just like, you know, right? Well. It's interesting because when we we talk about it, like you know, escape rooms are meant for for kind of big teams, and the ones we did, I think, were were four to eight, and then uh, Laser and I did one that was actually required like four to twelve people, and we took it on as just a pair. Yeah, um, that was interesting. Um, we talk about people coming to escape rooms and the roles they have, and actually, yeah. one of the important roles is like the the marshal, almost like uh -huh. the um, the one who's just like. Hey, uh, you found, what did you find over there? You found some red numbers. Cool. Well, you found a red lock earlier, right? So yeah. you two get together and it's, it's maybe not the person who's solving the puzzles, but the one who's like keeping things organized, making sure that we, have we finished this thing? Are we good with this? You know, can we move on from here? Kind of the, yeah. is that the project manager? Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I think it was it was uh yeah, Aubrey was a, a little bit more of the project manager in that case, but she was also very enthusiastic about things. Uh where yeah. where I I was really good like with knowledge and like uh taking once they found the things, figuring out the right solution, yeah. but finding uh, the things <laughs> and combining them is where where I was just totally lost. I was like, "All right. Yeah. You know, I I can logic my way through through a lot of things, uh but not how, you know, <laughs> how to how to handle it, it, you know, combining random things to, to make puzzles. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I totally, one of the big parts about it, I think is that, uh, that escape rooms are, have a cost attached, you know, usually it's like 40 per person to go do this for an hour. So it's a, it's a pretty big ask. Um, but the ones that are doing a really good job, they have high quality. They've got good puzzle design. Um, yeah. they make things more approachable, you know, um, because they have the practice so they can tell like, oh, that puzzle is a little bit too hard. Maybe we should do something a little bit simpler. Um, maybe we should do more things with like big, ridiculous props. Mm -hmm. um, we had, oh my gosh, <laughs> the the playground one that we did, we had to get a bunch of A pluses so that we could get out to the dodgeball contest. And like once we were able to get out of the classroom and onto the play structure, like things changed pretty dramatically. But there was like a miniature golf puzzle as part oh, of wow. it that we you can't even see at the start. You know, you have no yeah. idea that it's there. And eventually this stuff starts unlocking and it's just it's so cool to see something new. Like that's yeah, that's what I get out of like National Treasure, right? Any mm -hmm. of those movies. Aquaman, right? Ooh, right. I have, this clue is taking me somewhere totally different instead of just like somewhere else in the same room that we were in. Like, mm -hmm. so I'm yeah. a big fan of new, new escape rooms. I totally recommend people try them out at least once just cause. Yeah. yeah. yeah we went to pick, the one we went to was amazing. Yours. It was in Denver. We had a okay. ton of fun. Uh, I, you know, and I hate puzzles and I, I had a ton of fun. It's just not, not something where I would go, Oh, Hey, I'm going to, I want to go hang out with friends. Let's go do an escape room. 
if one of my friends said that to me, <laughs> then I'm in, right? But yeah. it's it's not my first choice, and that's and that's okay. Gotcha. And it's but they're a ton mm -hmm. of fun. Even if you don't like puzzles, like Rich was saying, you can yeah. you can you can do certain things during it to be assist of assistance. Like me, I, mm -hmm. I you know I was good with logic puzzles and, and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Aubrey was help good at helping my sister who was running all over the place putting things together. Uh, you know, and my mom was was uh, was in there with them too, right? You know, uh, trying mm -hmm. to observe things and also trying to keep us from climbing all over the room. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> excellent, yeah. yeah. There's always something. There's always something. Um, yeah, it was so good that we we decided we had like a free hour. We were waiting for a train, and it was like, should we go back to that escape room? We could probably knock it out in like an hour. Um, and this playground one, like I said, was meant for a minimum of four. And with two of us, I was just like soaked, just drenched mm -hmm. by the end of this run. It was tons of fun. Um, oh, my gosh. Anyway, uh, I played two escape rooms. That's what I did on the trip. Uh, meanwhile, other fun things. Uh, I got a chance to play Five Tribes again. Oh. Five Tribes, uh, I, I forget, but I love that game so much. Um, that is, oh, I can't remember who it's by off the top of my head, but uh, it's, it uses Moncala as as your play like on your turn you pick up all the meeples from one spot and you start moving them around the map um there's like limitations on where you can place them or at least the very last one that you place uh -huh. the color has to match a color of something else in the spot you get to do a cool ability when you land on the spot and then based on which meeples you matched at the end you get to keep those and they also give you a cool ability and that game is rad <laughs> that's great yeah no i uh, love it i I love. I, I always loved Moncali growing up, and I and, and I did not realize that Tribes was was built on, and like that was the the game mechanic there. Um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of. I'm more a little more interested to try it out. Check it out. I showing it to to a new person who had never played it before, and just saying like, "Well, the main mechanic is Moncala," and they were like, "Cool, all right, I'm I'm in." Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> and awesome. They got they got a close second. So oh, man, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, as far as my gaming this past uh, couple weeks, um, let's see. This morning I played some Destiny. I got some exotic arms that I hadn't mm -hmm. unlocked. Uh, I have been playing a lot of Magic the Gathering. Um, they are doing the uh, Caldrum Cal uh, set uh, quick draft, as well as some other odds and ends. So I've been doing a lot of drafting. Uh, I've cool. been doing some constructed. Uh, I'm really enjoying a, a certain red-white deck that I'm running right now. Um, and it's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, I want, I, I like blue. Blue is, blue is my go-to color in magic. Sure. Um, but right now blue isn't super strong. So I've been playing around with a lot of blue magic. Um, I like blue and red, blue and red are my go-tos. Uh, I was just thinking like my, usually like when I was teaching, I would carry a few decks around just to, yeah, yeah, to yeah. play on, on certain events. I don't know if any of them had blue in them. Maybe an ally deck. Maybe I had like yeah. a, a white, green, blue ally deck, mm -hmm. but black, yeah. black and green gets me a lot of, a lot of places. <laughs> yeah. Well, right now, right now, red and white are hot. Um, that's the, okay. kind of, the, that's the big combo. Uh, mono web is, white is pretty hot right now. Uh, I got dominated by a mono black yesterday. Just totally wiped the floor with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, and then I a dungeon I missed crawler. that about magic. Yeah, there was a oh, yeah? there was there's a dungeon crawler deck I played against yesterday, and it just it just kind of whooped whooped my butt as well. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was it was a it was a it was a ton of fun. I I just I really I really enjoy getting my butt kicked by creative decks, and I enjoy mm -hmm. coming up with fun creative decks. So yeah. I, I'm loving that. But the game that I've gotten into too much over the last two weeks, Team Fight Tactics. Yeah, team fight tactics. I bla I I one hundred percent blame your spouse for this. Uh, you should. You so should. <laughs> yeah. So you know, next time you see laser, uh, let them know that I, uh, mm. I I'm plowing through the low lower levels, and I'm 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 gonna be up there soon. Uh, I've gotten yeah. first a few okay. times. I've gotten second a few times. So I'm I'm working my way <laughs> through there. Uh, really, right. I want the I want the dragons to work out, but right now I've been re doing really solidly either with cannoneers or or, or redeemed. Those two seem to be yeah I pretty hot right now. A lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. I played yeah. a really nice uh, team knights tactics. cannoneers. Yeah. Oh yes! Oh, oh, give me knights all the time. Knights, knights and ironclad together. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So, so yeah, I had I had knights and, and and ironclad. Or no, no, I didn't do ironclad because I didn't need jacks because I did three knights and then I did cannoneers as my back line. Oh, nice. Uh, nice. Yeah. yeah, it was ridiculous. It's usually how I do it. Um, uh, let's see. Hope for folks who don't know, Team Fight Tactics is Riot's auto chess game yes. based on the League of Legends uh, IP. Um, 
it's really good auto chess. Um, yeah. I got super into to Hearthstone Battlegrounds, mm -hmm. and uh, it was it was easy for me to delete the app recently, get, just get rid of Hearthstone completely, and Team Fight Tactics has taken over um, that auto chess need. So yeah, I, yeah. I'm really really it's like really it. good auto chess. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, that's been a ton of fun. I'm hoping to get some more more uh, tabletop gaming in soon. Um, but right now it's just between the DJ cause it's summer. Uh, and I kind of explained this last yeah. week during the summer, all my focus is on like DJing and dancing events and that type of stuff. Uh, when yeah. fall and winter roll around, I'll definitely be in the game store a lot more. Well, You're right back in de de depending <laughs> on the world, right? I'll be, I'll be in we'll the game see. store a lot more, right? We can help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Dr. Who just subscribed, uh, an another sub. Thank you so much for, for subbing, uh, DJ who, and this is 43 months. That's I don't even know how many Whoa. like I don't even know like how many years that is. That's too much math for my head. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> DJ Who, not a doctor yet. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you know, D Doctor Who, DJ Who, I love it. I love that combo. I want to see uh I want to see our latest doctor behind the decks. Uh I'm into it. In fact, oh, wow. now one of my scenes has got to be a TARDIS. I'm going to get into this. Nice, All right. Nice. Anyway, <laughs> you know, this is this is technically a tabletop gaming news show. Should we get into some news? Fine. I mean, there's a ton. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we got let, some things to chat about. Yeah. Let, you know, I got I got some kind of ugly I want to chat about and get it out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just, you know, just just a, li a little bit. Um, so. Uh, it, it, it came out, uh, you know, over the last couple of weeks that um, the CEO of Broken Token has uh, been accused of um, all kinds of abuse by former employees, uh, you know, and in light of that, a, a, a lot of game companies have decided that they're going to cut ties. Uh, so far, about six major game companies have broken ties with Broken Token, Um and uh yeah and 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 so you know this isn't yeah. the best news to give but just so everyone's aware like hey let's you know if you have broken token stuff that's that's great a lot of good people worked on that stuff you don't need to like burn it and destroy it nobody's going to judge you um you know but maybe until this kind of shakes out maybe avoid buying more broken token you know yeah. it's it's yeah, good yeah. product but you know you know so you you you've already gotten a good product just don't get any more anyway so yeah. yeah, I know. Little little bit of crappy Not news, but but let's you know let's let's remember we are a new show and and make sure that everybody knows what's going on. Right there we go. We yeah. could get into more details, but I don't I don't think we need to get into more details on our show. No, they're they're easily found. Um, and uh, if you are interested, definitely check into it to find out what's going on. But uh, but yeah, just avoid them. Period. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh. Well, so we're, our news is kind of mixed up today. We got a whole lot of things to talk about. Oh yeah. Um. Uh, I'm going to leave. I've got a sad one for the end. Um, oh. <laughs> but, uh, well, let's put some happy in the middle. Let's put some yeah. stuff we're excited about in the middle. Yeah. 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 All right. Oh, but first, uh, you know what else I'm excited now? about? What's uh, that? noisily weeping taco has subscribed for 23 months and they're at tier <laughs> two, tier two. That nice. means extra emotes. <laughs> Ooh. I, I love emotes. I will subscribe to channels on Twitch just for their emotes. <laughs> I use I use the booty Excellent. emote everywhere from the Saving Throw Show channel. <laughs> everywhere. You go into DJ streams, all over that booty is all over the place. Okay. Dang. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one right there. <laughs> I love that one so much. Oh man. Yeah, I'll put it on the screen. Excellent. Oh, wait. <laughs> booty! <laughs> there it is all right oh man awesome right. so i think you had you had some good news <laughs> i do um and i i want to start i know you talked a little bit last week about the ennies right but yeah. this is this is kind of like the the set of awards that have come up based on en world um mm -hmm. and uh they they go ahead and they they take a long look at products that have come out over a year um anyone is able to submit their own stuff um whatever they want and they will knock it down until there's only about five per category, 10 for a couple of them, and then throw together their list for public voting, uh, which is happening right now. So on any, uh, which is E-N-N-I-E-awards.com, uh, you can check out all the 2021 nominations. Um, and, uh, and there's some 
pretty awesome things on here that, that yeah. I just wanted to take a moment and point out uh, in case you hadn't yet. Um, but before I do that, let's ask uh, Justin, what were some of your favorites on this? I, you, you know, I, 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 I'm with DJ who um, Alice is missing. I, I feel like it's a strong contender. Um, you know, I've, I've not gotten a chance to play it yet, right. but I've read about it and I have, I have, I've looked yeah. at it and, um, and I, this, it's probably the game on the list that I'm the most excited about, which is Alice is missing mm -hmm. across everything. Uh, you know, and yeah. the other thought I had, and, and we talked about this last week a little bit was it was surprising to not see, uh, Paizo and Wizards of the Coast participating. I, I, if I remember Absolutely. correctly, I don't even, I didn't even see Fantasy Flight Glam, Glams games in there. So. Yeah, not that I can recall. I'd have to look specifically. But yeah, this is pretty interesting because it does feel a lot more like third party material. Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest studio is is Renegade. Yeah, Renegade. Here? I think I th oh, is Renegade on there? Renegade is on here. Yeah. Okay, Renegade is um, probably the biggest studio <laughs> on the list then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really excited. Um, Alice is missing just because you know. Um, like the Spiel de Yaris, right? They gave uh, the this year's award to Macro Micro Crime City, right? Because of mm -hmm. the game experience. Like, what is there like Alice is Missing out there? Just nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, incredible, unique experience. Um, let's see. I, I was excited to see a few other things on here as well, just to, to point them out. Um, definitely, we do have, um, I mean, Renegade has Altered Carbon on here, which is mm -hmm. cool. Uh, one yeah. of the spotlight winners from the judges, just pointing out these awesome things. Um, but uh, let's see. I went through and I had some things to vote on on almost every single category. Um, best adventure, we've got Eyes Unclouded. This is a product that came out on DMs Guild, which is, um, oh my gosh, am I going to get this wrong? Uh, like uh, Miyazaki style movies as oh, adventures. Okay. Um, and so it's kind of this 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 beautiful adventure sense. Uh, the book is incredible. Um, Oh, I couldn't tell you how much it was on DMs Guild, but it's a very cool like compilation of adventures in there. Mm -hmm. um, so that one was very cool. Um, nice. We have the Adventures Tarot, the Empress deck. Do I have mine? Uh, this is one that we talked about, I think, uh, a while back, um, maybe last year. Yeah. Ah, this shiny, shiny, like all the cards yes. are super, super shiny. Yes, yes, we did talk about that so. last year. Uh, yeah, I remember I, it, that was kickstarted, super. right? And you were super excited about the mm -hmm. Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. And I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. So I'm excited mm -hmm. to see it up on the list because that's, you know, that's what I want to see is good products on there. Um, One thing that did kind of stand, send out was in the best art interior, uh, the Cortex, yeah. Cortex Prime game handbook. I love that that they submitted it and that it got here and that there are so yeah. many amazing artists uh, involved in this. Um, oh yeah, that's pretty excited to me. Uh, Planet Apocalypse for fifth edition is pretty exciting to me. That one kind of, I've I, I've seen that around. Um, mm -hmm. You know yeah. the the one th the other thing besides Alice um, Alice is missing that I think needs to win is under mm -hmm. best electronic book, and that'll be yep. Ancestry and Culture and Alternative to yes. Race and Five E by Arcanist Press. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I th I think I think those are the two things that I want to win. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, I know we've talked about that one before. That is a, a totally different look at choosing a, a race when you were making a fifth edition guide, turning it into broader ancestries, allowing you to make a lot more choices. It's a very, very cool book. Uh, and it's, uh, I don't know that it helped start the conversations that have been happening at Wizards, but it was such a good, good focus point, yes. right? Uh, people could look at it and say, look, someone else did it and they did it right. So you're or at least, you know, took a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I won't. I won't say right because I, you know, that's, it, it depends on, um, <laughs> on 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 who's whose version of right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm really excited about it. I hope that wins as well. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, DJ regular um, pointed out in the chat the extra rad thing about the uh, the layout of the Cortex Prime book is the art uh, is that each of the artists are credited next to their pieces in the book. And this is something, Ooh. and I don't know if DJ regular has heard me go on tirades about this, but this is something <laughs> I go on tirades about. Uh, I yeah, want yeah. to know each individual artist who did each individual piece so that I can follow them on Twitter so that I can buy their art. <laughs> <laughs> right? And it's no good when it's hidden in the spine somewhere, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Wizards does uh. a real crap job at this. And, uh, it, 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 you know, I love Wizards, but it makes me angry <laughs> when I can't yeah, figure yeah. out who the artists are. Uh, there's Absolutely. too many artists in my life, and I want to support them all. So 
Uh, show right. me where. Show me who made it. Show me who made the art. It would be nice. It'd be nice. It would be nice. Um, a couple more highlights: best monster and adversary. Uh, My dad's monster manual by James Intricasso. Oh, uh, I think we've talked about this book. That is, he shows a picture of a monster in the monster manual to his dad and his dad explains what the creature is having just no knowledge of D D at all <laughs> right um and they turned it into an alternate monster manual it's that's pretty fantastic that's amazing <laughs> oh, there's man. a there's a picture of them that i saw today on twitter because they need to for the ennies they've got to you know post a video just in case they win that they can play because mm -hmm. uh, they're not going to gen con and so uh, his dad was like, uh, do we need to wear like tuxedos for this? And I think James was like, I don't think so. Uh, showed up with tuxedos for yes. both of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Oh, man, that's so good. Uh, uh, I want gosh. them to win just so I can so they <laughs> can show that photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, other stuff in here that I am a big fan of, we of course have uh, Fiasco Second Edition, mm -hmm. uh, the new card-based version of the game. Um, I love Sentinel Comics, um, the uh, the role-playing game. So that's on here in a couple categories. Um, best podcast, Asians Represent is on here, and they have done a really really good job recently about talking about representation in role-playing games. So that's awesome. that's, that's fantastic. I I hope they take that category. Um, is that my list? I mean. It's a good list. Product of the year at the very end. What do you think? Product at the very end. Product of the year. Oof. All right. Here, let me look. Let You're going to give it to Alice is Missing? Ancestry and Culture? I, we have I, other stuff that, you know, <laughs> Brand Colonia, um, the spaghetti fantasy setting book. I don't even know that book. Um, Heart, the City Beneath is on here. I don't know that game, unfortunately. Yeah, I think that's part of the problem with the product of the year. Is there, is, I don't know enough of those things. Um, like the Stygian library remastered, like that, that's something that's, that I've seen a bunch. Um, and mm. I've heard it's like a beautiful book that's super well written. Um, and I really want to read it, but I haven't gotten a chance to, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. So product of the year is tough. Like of those, like I'm the most yes. hype about Alice is Missing, but I think mm -hmm. ancestry and culture is super important. So I think it is too. I think it is too. Um, yeah, it's it's hard. When I look at these, I think about which product would I get the most play out of. And so I kind of want to go for like the the mass, like the big system books. Yeah, so like, like Sentinel Cortex Comics Prime. or Cortex Prime. Yeah, yeah, are both good for that. But it's it's a hard choice. I mean, I'm still like, I just opened that box for Adventurous Tarot and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so good. <laughs> right? Those, those so, yeah. cards are gorgeous. Um, Right. It is a, a ranked voting system. So if you do get in there and you'll have your option to, to vote for everything that you want to, you know, just from from one to 10, uh, which is pretty cool. We find out the results, what, on September 16th? Well, dur during Gen Con, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is perfect. Um, Dom points out, and I totally agree with this. Why don't they have an actual play category at this point? Like, come on, it's been well, years. I mean, <laughs> do you remember how hard it was? Of a, I don't know if you were involved in it, but how hard of a fight it was to get uh, organized play its own section. Yeah, it's like true, that right? was a huge pain. And I and I think mm -hmm. uh, I I think I would love to have um, uh, actual plays. I think it's important to the to the hobby. I think it's important to the business. Uh, and I would love yeah. to have it there. And I'm willing to to add my voice to the cries uh, <laughs> in any way possible. So those of you out there who happen to run actual play channels, uh, <laughs> let us know how we can help. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I know a bunch of it is because the NEs, right, is based on a website, right? It's not it's not a, you know, uh, overarching supervisory committee or anything yeah. like that in, in tabletop games. It's just, they decided to do this and it's the one that's stuck. I mean, the origin awards, I suppose is kind of the, the second one. Yeah. Um, do the origin awards have, I'll have to check. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that the origin awards have voting, do they? That's just insider. Industry. I think it's industry votes. Yeah. yeah. It's industry mm -hmm. votes. Um, yeah. all right. Uh, you know, there's a certain game in this. You may be surprised the game that got me into war gaming. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be a surprise. Is Hero Clicks from WizKids Games? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's I, exciting. That's I, very cool. <laughs> I love Hero Clicks. There's, you know, mm -hmm. this is a game that I I had like tackle boxes full of these yeah. things, and every time like a new set came out, me and a buddy of mine, we'd get a, you know, we'd get a case, and we'd sit there and we'd just open them all day, and we'd do drafts with them, and it was a ton of fun. Uh -huh. 
Uh, I love Hero Clicks. I think it's a fantastic gateway game. I think it's yep. a fantastic long term game. Um, but I am not going to get back into it because I have no room at this point in time. However, <laughs> when I figure out a place to put more hero clicks, I'm going to be back in or until they have wow. a really good version that I can play on my phone. Um, sure. sure. So, you know, so, so, <laughs> so, so then they won't click. You need the clicks. <laughs> you did. Did. Hmm. did uh, all right. Okay. Uh, all anyway. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so WizKids is going to release a new, uh, Marvel hero clicks, 2021 storyline kit. Um, I'm not 100% what a storyline kit is since I've I've stepped away from WizKids for a while, but but here's mm -hmm. the, here's the kind of description. It's a uh, the, the Fantastic Four are going to take the center stage in this Marvel Hero Click special at home. Uh, storyline. So this new kit is aimed at giving all players a chance to receive an up card, whether or not they can make it in the store. So an up card is 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 part of their organized play program. Um, each kit comes with a figure foil pack, so you know, blank pack. Um, uh, with one of four never seen uh, uh, before seen click ver uh, clicks versions of the Fantastic Four. So uh, Richard Reed's Alpha, uh, Captain Universe, Invisible Woman, uh, the Thing of Earth 13, 20, uh, 13, 266, and the Human Torch <laughs> of the Uncanny Inhumans. Um, and then it also come with a Legacy Edition uh, turn card and team up foil pack card. Uh, and yeah, as, as well as a paper double-sided 24 by 36 map. Whew. I know that was a lot. Wow. Uh, it's going to be 10 bucks for each of these. So it's 10 bucks for a mini. What? <laughs> it's, it's, okay, 10, go ahead. But, but it's, but it's the storyline, right? Like it's, a, it's a whole storyline yeah. thing. This is the only way to get the minis. There's four different ones. Um, the sculpts are beautiful. Uh, this is something I love about WizKids and, you mm -hmm. know, in fact, Heroclix is the sculpts of... 90% of the time, they are fantastic. <laughs> you explained all that, and I thought it was going to cost more. Um, like oh. the fact that it's just 10 bucks to get it's in 10 on. Bucks. I mean, cool. That sounds yeah. great. I love the idea that there, there's organized play for this sort of thing, right? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. fantastic. I, I love the uh, Pathfinder Adventure card game, and the organized play that came out of that was awesome. Like yeah. that was just a fun thing I didn't expect. So it's cool seeing it here too. Yeah, we used to, I used to get together like twice a week and we'd have like tournaments and stuff. And uh, there was all kinds of cool prize support from WizKids. And uh, I used to go and do tournaments at like Comic Cons and stuff. And so it was like I would do wow. that tournament and I'd lose miserably. And then I'd go play the Versus <laughs> tournament and do like super awesome because I'm much better at cards than I am at miniatures. But uh, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, my next bit of news is uh, is all about Dune because I'm not done. I'm not done. <laughs> You're um, not done with Dune. No, I love that. I love that game. Um, they are coming out with the Sand and Dust source book, which is, of course, all about Arrakis. Um, so just diving in. I mean, it's it's hard to say that Dune is not already centered on Arrakis, but clearly, you know, we didn't get enough depth in the main book. And so this is just going to dive in and give us even more information so that you can make that kind of the hub of your adventuring uh, world, you know? Uh, actual information about the cities of Carthag and Arakeen. Um, that's how I say them. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's um, right. Carthag. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> um, <laughs> And, uh, and definitely there, there seems to be a lot of things in here like spice related talents and abilities that you can add to your character, an in-depth look at spice harvesting and those who try to smuggle it exactly what the, the storyline we were playing was all about. Um, a new complete adventure called The Water Must Flow. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. So when are we going to so, play that one, Rich? I mean, the, the, the book isn't coming out until December, uh, <laughs> but uh, you can pick this up, I think, for $42. Um, get big in here. I, I'm kind of excited. I think that if people get this book, which Dune fans are going to want to do, yeah. right? I want a second book. I want a second. I want a, a galaxy. Like mm -hmm. I want somewhere else to go yeah. in Dune um, that is kind of not just me coming up with it. Like I, I would love to get a breakdown on a few other cities, a few other planets that we could go visit because that would be fun. Uh, dear Modiphius, if you would like to supply two of the most popular Dune <laughs> actual play <laughs> cast members of, of the many, many Dune <laughs> actual play podcasters that are out there, uh, you know, copies of this new book ahead of time so that we can mm -hmm. talk about it on the show. I, or, or play Holy it, cow. You know. 
I mean, I was just going to buy it because <laughs> I'm excited. I just want it early. I, you know, I'll buy oh, it early I got too, you. but I want it tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, that would be nice. It looks like uh, the PDF is currently in um, in approval. So according to the website, so they're close. They're pretty I'm close. Ready. I approve. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All oh right. wow! Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm a you know I was already talking about miniatures. I'm gonna talk about miniatures some more. I'm a huge fan of Games Workshop. Um, I'm super excited about Warhammer Plus that's coming out. It's the app. It's gonna be like five ninety nine a month, uh, or you could buy it a year. Uh, all kinds of cool things coming with it. But I am not talking about this. I am talking about my envy of those who yet live in the UK. This is the one time that I'm envious of them, um, other than their music scene. Um, <laughs> okay. So uh, Games Workshop is launching a new weekly hobby magazine series, which will begin release in the UK on August 25th. So this, uh, this magazine series is going to showcase various models, paints, and tools with each issue, as well as tutorials to aid the newcomers as they d dive into the miniature hobby. So ready? Ooh. Each issue contains guides on how to assemble uh, and paint various models to help players uh, build up great looking armies. Um, and it also offers advanced techniques on painting, uh, different profiles what? on the miniatures, and different gameplay scenarios. So there's two subscription models, premium and standard. Standard option gives uh, subscribers tools, brushes, binders, art prints, while the premium option uh, features four army, uh, <laughs> four, four army collectibles for subscribers, so one per issue. So they're going to get a Chaos Space Marine, a Tyranid, a Tau, and an Orc. Um, wow. Yeah, right? So that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, no, like I, I, I am super jealous of this, uh, envious, yeah. God, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it just yeah. looks so cool. Like, and, and here's the thing about the, how to paint guides. I've done them before from Warhammer and they're really good. Um, uh, I'll, one of these days I'll, I'll bust out my trolls that I did through, through this program to kind of test it out. And they're still some of the best painted miniatures that I have in my collection. So, yeah. Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, you just reminded me that once I went to at a convention, I sat down to a, a Reaper like how to paint minis sort of deal, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I picked up a troll. Uh -huh. I was like, I'm going to paint this troll. What color are trolls? Trolls are green. Yeah. So I painted it green and I was yeah. like, I'm done. And they were like, you want to add any detail? I was like, what, what are you talking about? Trolls are green. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> they were right. Um... <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Man. Very cool. No, that's really exciting. I, I love that they're going out with all like just just going, giving everything they can right to, to get you into it. Um, I wish that stuff shipped to the US like there's a, right a connection. I was trying to get a Taskmaster book recently and they, they won't ship it to us. They won't do Ooh, it. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm Taskmaster. Uh, we got some bad news recently about Taskmaster. Oh, no. <laughs> One of oh, the, no. Yeah. The uh, what's his name passed away. The carrot and oh. the box guy. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. That is sad. That, that is, is sad. That is sad. <sighs> but it's all on YouTube okay. and you should watch it. Yeah, absolutely. You should. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, next. I have some minis, actually. What? Um, what are you doing? Jump into it. Yeah. Who are you? Well, well, <laughs> the thing is, I was pretty excited to see that uh, the Gale Force 9 is coming out with a collector's series, right? They do a couple of these. Uh, this one is Drizzt and the Companions of the Hall. And I was just excited oh. to see them all gathered in one place, right? You, That's wild. You get in here, you get your your Brunor and your Cadibri and your Regis uh, and your Wolfgar and your Guinevar and your, of course, Drizzt, you know? Yeah. Um, Gale Force 9, I mean, this is unpainted, so this is all up to you to paint, which means that immediately I'm like, Ugh. Um, but the sculpts look pretty cool. I'm glad to see them all together at the same time. Um, and this would be a really fun thing, especially if you're getting into, I don't know, a certain video game, uh, Dark Alliance, where oh. you're dealing with these characters a whole lot. I believe, you know, maybe I, you want to check this out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so you're, you're, how do you say the Dark Elves name? I say Drizzt. Okay. So you're Team Drizzt. All right. Rather than drizzed. Drizzed? <laughs> I've always said drizzed. Right. Oh, yeah. Now I make it two syllables. All right. <laughs> uh, you're probably right. All right. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, well, you know, here's here's the thing. is I, I saw a request in chat for, for the most minis, so clearly we need more minis. Uh, I'm sure. 
so so one of my favorite mini mini producers is Weird. They 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 make some fantastic minis. They're great. They're kind of like uh, steampunk, but if steampunk was in like Louisiana, um, Ooh. it's 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 amazing. Uh, so Weird uh, Miniatures is is releasing the Other Side Starter Box. So uh, you may have missed this last week. Uh, they're releasing a new game called, uh, the, which I believe is like the next step in the game. Like it's it's Malifaux's okay. third edition now. Instead of doing fourth edition, they're doing the Other Side or something. Don't know all the details, but I'm still excited about it. Um, anyway, so the Other Side Starter uh, Box set, it's going to be released in November. Uh, it's going to be compatible f- compatible with both uh, Malifaux 3E as well as the other side core rules. Uh, each character in the set will include the Malifaux stat card so they can be played in either system. Um, so the box set, you know, this is the good stuff. It features the court of two versus the guild, and it comes with 24 pre-assembled miniatures, uh, including one of my favorites, which is a uh, Sonia Kurd, or Crid. Um She's kind of like the executioner and represents justice. It's so cool. Uh, you know, and then uh, three guild mages, six Gatling gunners. I mean, this thing's wild, right? You know, and a bunch of others. Oh, wow. Uh, it's also going to include tokens, markers, fate deck, um, you know, uh, line of sight um, measurers. So, yeah, it's going to be cool. The it's, uh, starter set will retail for about 100 bucks. Uh, that's pretty good. That's about $2 per mini uh, plus... Yeah. A little bit extra for all the other goodies, so uh, I'm I'm super into it. I'm excited. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready for this. <laughs> that I'm is re- very cool. I'm I'm ready to get back into Malifaux. Oh my gosh! I think uh, I have. I I needed a very cool mini, and I went to Malifaux to find one. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's so it's many eerie ones. Are. So many D and D minis uh, started off as Malifaux minis for me. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't just want a druid. I wanted a druid flying in the air on like a pillar, uh, a pillar of air, with a huge staff. You know. Yeah. No. I can't use it. it on a game table because it's too big. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> that's great. All right. Uh, cool. Uh, well, my next one. I want to jump out of minis for a second. Is that okay? Is that? Yeah, we... that's fine. We can jump out of okay. minis All for right. a second. I don't have um, any more minis except for one. Okay. Well, let, let's talk about something that is kind of uh, mini adjacent. I mean, I could see how this could apply. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a really interesting thing that happened recently. Um, this uh, this guy, Dr. Robert Hovden, uh, a legal provocateur, right? Trying to to pick at the edges of the law. Mm, you know, yeah. why not? Let's see what happens. Um, and what he did is uh, he decided to create a very strange copyright. Um, people have been talking about it for a couple of weeks now. Um, he copyrighted a deck in Magic called Angels and Demons, a collection of cards uh, spanning all the way back to like beta. Um, and the, the premise of it, of the argument here, is, is that imagine that you are writing a recipe book, right? Yeah. So you go out and you find, find like 50 recipes, right? They'll say 60, 60 recipes, 50 yeah. and some mana. Um, <laughs> and you <laughs> like those recipes, right? They're not yours but you were the one who found them, you gathered them together, and you wrote a book. You should be able to copyright that book, right? Right. So that's the claim, is that by creating a copyright for this deck, that's a collection of objects, and he put in some artistic work in collecting that the perfect way and uh, and put down a copyright on it. Okay. So, you know, potentially, if you use that deck, you owe something? I don't know. No. You know? <laughs> no. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's really, really a very strange thing because it's, it, as I believe, went through. Yeah. But I wonder, like, you know, what the difference of, you know, how, how copyright law works whenever you talk about it and you consider that now let's, let's take it a step narrower, right? You mm-hmm. create a recipe and... Uh, you 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 have taken all the pieces and you put it together and you've created this recipe and you have a single recipe. Mm-hmm. Can you copyright that recipe without, you know, and, and force force it so that it will never appear in another cookbook again? Or isn't that what KFC has done? <laughs> have they for they, their, their their secret chicken stuff? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I yeah, see, I don't know, right? But you see, but I mean, come on, like you can Google it and you can find a KFC recipe. Sure, sure. 
can recreate it. Yeah. But yeah, right. That, that's kind of this this strange idea because copyright isn't something that we think about in terms of like the playing of a game, right? I can't yeah. play a game and copyright my strategy, right? So that doesn't mm -hmm. doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. And this this argument is so close to it that it's really really intriguing. I I, um, fe I feel like because of variations of the deck or how they acquired the deck, that. Mm -hmm. Uh, one could argue that they used a different process to come up with the deck, and thus it is a deriv uh, uh, der it's a derived product. It's not a, you know, not a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's a different thing. It's not copyrightable, or you know right. what I mean. And yet, and yet, we see the paperwork. So uh, I'm interested to see what uh, what Magic players, um, whether they are also going to like rush to copyright their favorite decks just so they mm -hmm. got their name on it, uh, or whether Wizards is going to just put their foot down and say, like, this is ridiculous, or or whether no one will care. <laughs> I, I, I mean, ultimately, I don't think anyone will care. Yeah. But yeah, no, it'd be really cool to get a copyright lawyer to come on and talk to us a little bit about that. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious. I, I, uh, Corey Doctor talked about it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'd be interested. I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's anything that is enforceable. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that's you, the thing. You, you, right? I don't. I don't think you could go to a magic store and say, "All right, no, you can't use this deck because it violates my copyright." Can you imagine what was uh, what was the group? Um, came around for music what's the music group uh just coming around to magic tournaments and like slapping notices down mm -hmm. <laughs> on people's tables yeah <laughs> on their play mats mm -hmm. <laughs> terrible terrible <laughs> and i think uh, i think copyright in order for it to maintain its strength you have to yeah right metallica um you have to um you have to defend the copyright <laughs> yeah so right. yeah i don't know it's weird it's weird all right it's weird Copyright is strange, and I don't get it, but yeah. this was intriguing. <laughs> yeah, that is. Um, you know what is also intriguing? What's Miniatures. That? <laughs> Hold on, what? <laughs> Miniatures. I had one more thing, oh. and I'm going to go to it now. I'm just going to get it taken I care see. of. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> ooh, yeah, DJ Regular put out a good point. Alternatively, I could see uh, Negative Land trolling magic tournaments with something related to this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, so, uh, WizKids, I've been talking about them a lot, and Miniatures, I've been talking about them a lot, too. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit more. Uh, so, <laughs> so Giron is, uh, is the enemy of Lavistus in Stygia, and they fight brr, all the time for, for dominations. And D sure. the Icons of the Realms is going to be putting out a premium Arc Devil Giron uh, premium figure. So for those who don't know, this is he's like a uh, half snake type person with cool wings and stuff. Um, it's gonna be a large size arc devil. It's gonna MSRP of fifty bucks. Um, I should have prepared a slide to show it to you, uh, but you can Google it. It's awesome. It's awesome looking. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, yeah. the WizKid site has plenty of pictures of this, given references to regular size characters and stuff. Yeah, it's big. It's big. Yeah. It's awesome. I'm I'm pretty excited about it. That's a good threat, right? I mean, yeah. that's what you want to drop down on a table. <laughs> yeah, you slap that on a table and somebody's going to be like, oh, man, at least it's not a sapphire dragon. Oh, I mean, <laughs> right, right. Oh, my gosh. Cool. Um, well, my next one is actually, uh, I mean, it's its for you, but, uh, but I did want to point it out to everybody, um, which is that right now on Humble Bundle, they have a Starfinder book bundle. Um, you can go in and for, this one is 50. You are getting $422 worth of books. Oh, it's a pay what you want. Pay at least 50 for these. Okay. Um, you know, you get smaller amounts. Um, but it includes stuff like the uh, our beginner box PDFs. Mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, different adventures, Pathfinder, or excuse me, Starfinder society, society scenarios. Um, the entire, uh, let's see, Dawn of Flame adventure path is in here. Oh, tons nice. and tons of flip mats, um, which I think is very cool because then you could take those and, and upload them to Roll20 pretty easily use yep. for your own purposes right yep. um um also some of the older ones like uh flip mats from pathfinder so like the flooded dungeons or the elemental planes stuff that you know you might find a use for in here mm -hmm. um we've got our character portfolio of course the core rule book is in here first contact um uh was it the alien archive i believe mm -hmm. packed worlds i mean there's a ton of stuff in here that's awesome um I'll have to see so if you're excited I already have <laughs> absolutely right yeah, yeah. um Finish your collection here, or if you're excited about starting out with Starfinder, um, 
there you go. There's everything. <laughs> I prefer Seems the like. Starfinder 2 system to both Pathfinder and Pathfinder 2. Yeah. Yeah. Let's um, see. I'm going to drop down to the 12 item bundle for $5. You get the core rule book, first contact, uh, the start of the adventure path, a couple flip mats, and a couple other things. Oh, that's so, a that's five great. bucks. Yeah. Grab it. <laughs> I'll probably grab it all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's this game that has always been a game that I think I would really enjoy playing, and I've never gotten a chance to play it. And I see people playing it everywhere, and I know I have friends who own it. I've just never gotten to actually, and I've watched games. I've watched from beginning to end. It's a game totally, totally in my heart. Seems like something I should love playing. And really, I need to be playing this. And it is Kings of Tokyo. Uh, I, King of Tokyo. I am shocked right now. Right? I'm totally shocked. <laughs> right? I, I love everything about this game, except the fact that I've mm -hmm. not played this game. Uh, wow. So, so Richard Garfield is putting out King of Tokyo, the monster box. So this is a board game box from um, Ilio S uh, Elo USA. It's going to be uh, re-releasing King of Tokyo. This is going to be the second edition of the game. It's going to be a huge monster box. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's I'm excited about this. Maybe I'll actually get into it. Uh, it comes yeah. with um, all of the power up and Halloween expansions. It also comes with uh, a baby Gigazor. Uh, and it has uh, its own evolution cards as well as 11 exclusive cards to the box set and a dice tray. What? Wow. And uh, so this is a game for two to four players, ages eight and up. It takes about 30 minutes, which I know is true because I've watched about a half a dozen games uh -huh. of it from right. beginning to end. Uh, $70. Uh, so so this, sure. is, this wow. is the moment where I get finally get into this game. I'm trying to think if there is a better King of the Hill tabletop game than King of Tokyo. No. I don't think so. No. It's, it's amazing. It's really, really good. It's fun. The mechanics are, are really interesting. Uh -huh. I love that it's a, a dice roller. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's a fun game. <laughs> it's, I, yeah, I, I can't explain it. I've always wanted to play it, and I've watched it played, and I've been around it being played. I've just never done it. I'm trying to think what my game like that is. I'll have to, I'll have to think. I know Sagrada is certainly on that list, but that's a game I would love to play. <laughs> All right. What else you got All right. for me? Um, ooh, let's see. Um, let's uh, let's kick over. Oh, gosh. You know me. Um, let's jump over to Kickstarter, um, where I have two Kickstarters to chat about. But the first one is actually, uh, I'm very excited about this because uh, this is first by Kobold Press, makers of amazing 5th Ed products. Um, and second, this one is Tome of Heroes. Like, I know um, a lot of 5th Ed companies have... Or, third-party companies have made a lot of monster books. I know the DM's Guild has a lot of player options, but this is a player-centric book called The Tome of Heroes, um, giving you a ton of subclasses, um, variant races, high magic, treasury of new gear. This is kind of what I have been looking for. Not, not quite a player's handbook to write, but kind of a third-party version of what that could look like. Um, I'm very excited to grab a copy of this. The PDF is going to be $29. Uh, the hardback is up to $49. Uh, they also have some cool limited editions available, but they're doing pretty well, so they're still unlocking new subclasses, new options that they're going to be adding to the game. Um, and they've got a great list of creators working on this as well. So if you are up for some new player options, if you play mostly, I think, um, you know, on Roll20, if you play mostly at home, I mean, there's definitely Roll20 um, compatibility here. Let's just double check. Our VTTs, is it VTT? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, of choice. Oh, I can't see it really quick. Um, oh, yeah, your choice. <laughs> so as long as you're playing D&D &D somewhere else besides D&D &D Beyond, you get to use these things pretty easily. And uh, I would recommend picking this one up. Nice. It's going to be a lot of cool stuff. Awesome. All right. Uh, ooh, man, I have two more pieces of news, and then I have some cool stuff to do. So my next piece okay. of news. Uh well, we, we all know that uh, Magic is going to be a little bit darker this year. Uh, digging into the depths of, of maybe some of their horror franchises. Let's talk about Innistrad. Let's talk about <laughs> Crimson Vow, which will be released in November on November 19th of 2021 for Magic the Gathering. So, <laughs> yeah, another very horror-themed uh, expansion. Uh, this one's going... So here's things to know. Uh, the product line is going to be as follows. So there's going to be booster packs and displays. So each booster pack uh -huh. will include 15 cards. Normal thing. Each uh, pack, uh, each of these displays comes with 36 packs. Each case includes six displays. Great. Um, cool. 
you know, so nothing, nothing too, too weird there. Uh, then there is the um, set boosters, which are slightly different boosters. Those are 12 magic cards, an art card, and a token or special card right. from Magic's history. Uh, then there's, of course, the collector booster packs. So these are the premium packs, which feature 15 cards, a foil token, and they come with, you know, blah, blah, same thing. And I'm glad uh, that they were splitting those up based on exactly what you want out of magic. Very yeah. smart. I don't know when they started doing it. I but. don't know when they started doing it either, but you know, it's like, and I can keep going. So there's also going to be the theme booster packs. So these are 35 magic cards around a specific theme. Mm. There's the Val bundle, Ooh. which includes eight set booster packs, 20 foil lands, uh, spin down life, a uh, bunch of stuff. Uh, there's the Crimson Val gift bundle which is uh, only slightly different than the Val bundle uh, in that it uh, the box art is different and it comes in oh, cases okay. of six. Yeah, that's really that really sure. seems to be about it. Um, and then... Uh, cover. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, and then there's the Crimson Val Commander decks. So the two Commander decks for Crimson Val have been dubbed Spirit Squadron and Vampiric Bloodline. These are a great, great way to get into the game. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, of course, there will be the Va uh, Crimson Val pre-release pack. So these are for pre-release events. If you're a pre-release event, you know, this will be for you. So uh, these packs mm -hmm. typically include six booster packs, uh, foil promo uh, of either a rare or mythic card uh, from the set, a deck box, spin down life con counter, and they come 15 to a case. Oh my gosh, I miss doing pre-release drafts. Right. Um, like that's, that's the, tons of fun. That's the yeah. only, that's like the only way I'd want to get like physical cards is going and doing pre-release drafts. Um, mm -hmm. Meanwhile, people don't know the cards very well you get yep. those awesome foils that are distinct from the ones you get in the regular set so people later are always like how the heck did you get that card exactly right pre-release <laughs> yeah you know uh, magic the gathering online which arena which is where i play all the time they they also do pre-release there as well so i will be doing some pre-release draft for uh this set and the set before it nice very yeah cool. wow all right. Well, now I'm you, excited. Now I want to play. You, you got anything else news-wise? Oh, I do. I, I know you have one, one thing, and it's, is that it? Are we to the last of your news? I think I've got three things oh, to well, check then, in about. Then, then go but ahead. But this is a, this may be a quick one, because I know you talked about this last yeah. time, too, but I, I can't let an opportunity to talk about Flamecraft go by without talking about Flamecraft. Um, Kickstarter went live, um, currently doing very well. They're, they're well over a million at this point, uh, busting through all of their stretch goals. Um, they had, when the Kickstarter launched, the opportunity to get to... This is a wonderful game where you're playing a bunch of little dragons. Um, you have a handful of dragon cards. You're, you're sending them to these stores um, to gather resources, and you're, you're trying to create enchantments, open new stores. Um, there's tons of different ways to, to gather reputation and be the best flame crafter in town. I mean, it's, it's a delight. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I'm really excited about the game. I wrote a bunch of puzzles for it. People have been digging those, which makes me feel pretty good. Um, but uh, but I'm excited that it's gotten so far because they're adding even new things all the time, like more stores, more dragons. Um, they have a lot of creativity behind this project, and it's showing in like the social goals, all the different things that they're trying to do to make this game really robust and build a community. Um, the Discord is going wild. So nice. if, uh, if you have seen this game and you're like, I'm curious about that, check it out. Check it out on Discord. See what people are saying. Um, get in there. Uh, the game itself is $39 coming with the Kickstarter exclusive content, um, which is pretty good. Um, you can also get this like bread dragon plush, which is adorable. Um, people like it so much that they had to add another one. So once they hit whatever number, they've also added a meat dragon, Oh, nice! <laughs> which is great. Um, people want the whole set and we'll yeah. see how far the Kickstarter goes. But <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do want the whole set. I will be mm -hmm. honest. Right. The game's fun. I mean, you you played it, right? Yeah. Yes, of course. That, except that butter dragon um, or bread dragon. Oh, you. You are tricky, <laughs> you. <laughs> I don't think in that game I got any bread dragons. I was super sad. Uh, yeah, no, there, was some, there was some nonsense going on with bread dragons. Oh, yeah. And meat dragons, too. Uh, but, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I think I yeah, it's doing really well. Amethyst. Amethyst? Oh, yeah. Crystal. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crystal ones are really good too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a fun game. The art's incredible. So check it out. They do have like a coffee table style art book if you just want the art because there's a lot of backers of the campaign that just want the art. It's that good. Um, so yeah, check it out. Cool. I'm going to jump into my last piece of news. Um, I'm going to make it quick. 
you know, because I don't want to sound like a whiz kid shill. Uh, you know, they're not sponsoring <laughs> this podcast yet. Um, but once they do, then I will be a shill. Uh, but until then, um, I do want to bring this up because this looks this looks interesting to me. It's it's a game uh, called uh, it's coming out in October. It's Dungeons and Dragons Dungeon Scrawlers. So that's Scrawlers S C R A W L E R S. Um, in sure, the overview is race your friends through the dungeon mazes of Undermountain in this lightning fast and wildly entertaining scrawling adventure for the whole family. Um, I don't know if this is like a, a, a series of games that they've put out already called Scrawlers or if this is the first one they're launching with. But essentially the idea is yeah. you get 20 uh, double-sided dungeon sheets um, for each of, of, of 10 different dungeons. You get five character tiles, mm-hmm. 12 key tokens, eight orb tokens, you get dry erase markers, and you get a rule book. And the idea is that each of these mazes have multiple ways to get to the prize. And you're racing your companions through the maze to try to get to that prize. And you're literally drawing on the map how you got through this maze. Uh, and then I think you just wipe it off and do it again, right? Um, so, wow. yeah, it's, it's really interesting. So uh, Dungeon Scrollers contains 10 unique mazes of increasing complexity, uh, introducing new challenges as you go. Uh, these include portals, oh, locked yeah. doors, multiple bosses, time limits, and more. Uh, so with uh, multiple paths through each maze and over 100 different three maze combinations, you'll never start s- stop scrolling. So it looks interesting. That is exciting. Yeah. yeah. I, I Trying just, to get those victory points. Right. Yeah. I just don't know. Like, you know, it, it, it reminded me a little of Clank, right? You know, you're racing in to get to something and, and hope for, hoping right. for the best, right? <laughs> I'm wondering how this plays out. I'm pretty excited about this game. I'm not going to lie. I mean... It looks, it looks like it's only a 15 minute game. So, yeah. I mean, you get to play a few of them pretty quick, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, I like yeah. mazes. No, that looks intriguing. Yeah. 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 Uh, and looking at them, they look, uh, you know, if, if you sat down and were like, one, two, three, go, and you had objectives through these mazes, like, this is going to take a little bit. This sounds, yeah. sounds interesting. Cool. Well, I got a little bit more because I got excited about uh, a game. And this one actually came out a bit ago. Um, and I, uh, let it pass by, but recently I decided to get back in because I want to support some small publishers. Um, so Green Ronin uh, recently came out with the Trojan War for Fantasy Age. Um, this is kind of a, a reimagining of the book in a lot of ways, specifically so that you can play in the universe of the Trojan War. Um, if you haven't played Fantasy Age, the coolest thing about the game is the stunt system. It makes combat really cinematic and interesting. Your turns are very different. Um, even though you might be doing the same, like, well, I swing my sword, um, it's very possible to make that extremely different. Lots more damage, lots more things happening. It's great. I love stunts. Um, and that kind of fits really well with the the Homeric, like, Trojan stories <laughs> right um yeah. these characters doing ridiculous things you can almost imagine them doing stunts in here mm-hmm. so this book is pretty interesting it gives you a lot of options for um new equipment like making sure you're you're here in the bronze age and not not so much in, in kind of the more modern fantasy age tale um lots of things dealing with religion um because the gods are pretty important not quite at theros but there is like an entire piety system in here so maybe you know maybe like theros um there's also the possibility to specialize later on, have your, uh, you know, your inner demigod abilities start building once you hit about third level. Um, or maybe you want to play someone who is like a divine offspring right from the start. And, uh, and as play progresses, you become, you know, a little bit more powerful and a little bit more strange because most people are just human. We're just playing in the Trojan War. That's all there is. <laughs> there's humans and there's a uh, stranger folks. Oh, the triple six. Yeah. <laughs> It's my favorite time to roll triple six. Forget rolling stats. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> it's playing <laughs> fantasy age. They're rolling three sixes. The best feeling. Um, six stunt points and an automatic success. What a dream. Um, so yeah, if if this is your like part of the the story that you want to tell, if you want to focus on kind of a uh, a more um, you know not not quite as resource heavy as a lot of our fantasy games tend to be kind of in the medieval period mm-hmm. you want to run earlier and, uh, and kind of see what that could be like this is a pretty dang good option um and if you are playing a theros game i recommend picking this up as well just because there are some some interesting things here you might be able to weave them together uh in pretty cool ways even though the systems are relatively distinct seems uh, yeah i i uh... 
it seems like a good resource regardless, right? You know, some books, mm -hmm. like some books I have on my shelf, they are just, they're great resources regardless of what setting I'm running or what I'm playing. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of old, like second edition books and first edition books. And even, I even mm -hmm. have a few third edition books sitting on my shelf just because I thought they were great references. Um, you know, yep. like the, the, the Eberron uh, third edition book, right? You know, beautiful book, great, introduces you to everything in such a great way. I loved a fourth edition book, but third edition has a little bit more meat. Um, I would even say yeah. like the same with Forgotten Realms, right? Like I, I love buying books that have, I, I have a Conan game on my shelf that I've never played, but it has really <laughs> yeah. great lore in the Conan universe. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just love that book and I love some of the ideas in it yeah. and I've brought it into other mm -hmm. games. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. this is a, this is a really cool one kind of just for that. And uh, you, with that in mind, the PDF is 10 bucks. Um, yeah. You can also get it up on drive through RPG prints on demand, but, uh, but yeah not bad resource all right and it's good like reading through it book is good <laughs> nice nice yeah all right uh so you got one more thing we got well we got one more thing to talk about before we go to our new segment yeah and this this is a thing that that i read recently right this is a, an article from august 10th uh and it got brought forward by uh by mike selinker who who kind of brought my attention to it and uh it's just a little bit of going i mean we we kind of know at this point like folks who have been on kickstarter um watching the board game community over the last you know year um that shipping and freight has become a nightmare um and a, a pretty terrible one for a lot of games companies um Steve Jackson Games specifically on August 10th wrote this this blog article. Um, Phil Reed, who is there, um, uh, one of the big folks over there, mm -hmm. just totally blanked on a title. Um, and uh, and they, they wanted to talk a little bit about how the state of freight in the world is kind of changing one of their games in particular. Um, they, they put out Car Wars 6th edition and, uh, and that required, you know, five containers to be shipped uh, slowly making their way to the U.S., right? Um, and by the time they, you know, uh, ordered them at the start, and by the time they had to pay for them, they had tripled in cost. Mm -hmm. um, which means, you know, they, for them, because they have they have Munchkin, they have all these products, so they're able to really deal with that. They have that buffer. That's okay. Um, but uh, but just because it occurred, he calls this kind of, you know, for, for the games industry, kind of an extinction level event is a, is the big title of this, this article, just saying that companies that do not have that buffer, they're stuck with only bad choices, right? So they can either, you know, well, go ahead and ship it for this ridiculous loss that we're not going to be able to get back, or you leave it over there, making all of your customers angry and still paying more money to just keep it there, hoping that shipping costs will come down at some point. So yeah. It's a, a pretty terrible moment, and even though we've seen it, this was kind of a like, hey, by the way, call to action. Um, if you have a small game publisher or a game store that you enjoy, like, go buy some stuff. <laughs> you yeah. know, um, which is one of the reasons I picked up the Trojan War is just because I, I like green running and uh, I want to make sure they're still making products. So, yeah, you know, yeah, no, ab absolutely. Like, you know, in 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 your local gaming store is going to be the best place to buy things. Um, mm -hmm. if you can, right. You know, and a lot of your gaming stores will be able to order stuff for you. So you don't have to go to places like Amazon to, to order it. Um, yeah. mm -mm. you know, granted, like it's occasionally, correct. like, you know, if getting some of the staples off Amazon, I don't think it's a big deal, but it, especially new games, uh, new releases, mm -hmm. get those, get those from your game store. Cause that's, that's, that's really yeah. where a, your game store is going to make their money and your creators are going to make their money is off that first run of the game. After that, you know, yeah. it's diminishing returns. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And on that same note, like if you are backing your product on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. be a little patient because those folks are, you know, worried about whether their games are even going to come out now, you know, because yeah. just shipping has, has added the cost so much that, you know, yeah. that wasn't in their budget at the start. Yeah. <laughs> Kickstarters it's, are often on site budgets. <laughs> yeah. Let's, you know, and, and, and I'm going to I'm going to use that that uh, bit of information to segue into our next segment a little bit. Uh, this is the first time we've tried to do this segment before, but let me give you a little bit of background. So a, an amazing company called um, Dungeons & Lasers, they kickstarted Fantastic Terrain. We reviewed it here on this podcast. Um, they too are facing some of these, the, these shipping issues as I experienced waiting for uh, this next set to come uh, for an unboxing. Now, this is a retail set, so this isn't kickstarted. So this is the stuff that you'll see in your local gaming store soon. And we are going to try to do an unboxing here um yes. we will see how this works 
All right, so um, there we go. That's it. So here we are. This is the uh, oh, man. Our mugs are in bad places. Let's make us. Let me make you sm us smaller. Uh, and uh, and then we'll and then we'll get into this bit. Um, sure. Be because we don't need to see that much of our face. We're here to look at the sweet, sweet sci-fi product. Oh man, you can totally see my hand on my mouse. Whoa. <laughs> right. Now you can, yeah. All right. Um, all right, so here we go. So here's the sci-fi starter set. So these terrains are very clickable terrain, uh, clickable terrain pieces. Here's some of the things you can build. Um, yeah, it's it's really really cool. I really enjoyed the other boxes. So what I'm gonna go and do is we're just we're gonna explore this this box together. Nice. So uh, yeah, make sure... I was really excited about these last yeah. time. Yeah, Next make sure <laughs> make sure, make make sure. Oop other side make sure to check out uh you know dungeon lasers on facebook dungeon lasers official on instagram and of course dungeonsandlasers.com these are fantastic um terrain pieces if you do a lot of uh miniatures uh you know whenever we get back around the table you're in your bubble with your 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 companions um but here we go let's take a look i don't have any of my tools so we're not going to cut anything apart we're just doing like <laughs> you know we're digging in and then probably you know maybe next week i'll or a week after I'll, I'll have some of them put together so we can look so uh at first look let's take a look so these are the clips that hold everything together um right. i'll show you how those attach in a second uh if you look at this like these are nice thick uh yeah nice nice thick pieces of plastic right uh, if you look there, it's nice and thick. That's going to be very sturdy. Um, you can't see this, but I'm 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 working with the uh, the uh, uh, sprue right here. You know, the sprue. You can you can feel the thickness here. It's it's thick. Um, and the pieces. Let's see. You know, with my hands. Uh, there we go. With my hands, I can peel one off. Um, one one word of warning, and I re remember this from the last set is you're going to want to make sure I have some nice flat edged snips. So flat edged snips, so you can get a nice even cut. Uh, because you're going to have a lot of little tabs like these, and you're going to want to get those nice and flat. Going to want to run over this with right. like a, a really soft file or really uh, you know fine grit sandpaper just to clean that up a little. Um, but not too bad, not too bad at cleaning up, especially for sprues this thick. Thicker sprues, you're going to tend to run into a little bit more cleanup you need to do, cleaning up the flash as it were. So those were the connectors. Let's take a look at the actual pieces. So, all right. Well, that's cool. Look at that. That's a doorway right there. Ooh, and so, nice. you know, th those clips I was talking about, they clip in right here. So see that little bit right there? Let's take that one that I already popped and, uh, yeah, Oop, sorry. Um, and see this little hole that kind at there that kind of matches, right? So, uh, what yeah. you would do is you would just do this and you would clip it right there. Boom. Clicked into place, right? Perfect. It's not going right. anywhere. It's oh, and now you can attach the floors. Nice. Right? And now you can attach the floors. Stays pretty sturdy, so you can pick these up and you can take them with you. Um, now, let's continue looking at the walls. So that's a cool wall piece. What I like about uh, what they do is they, they think about different ways that you can use these pieces. Um, and so if you look, this side is slightly different than that side. Not hugely yeah. different, as you could tell but just slightly just enough to kind of create that sense of atmosphere of change as you're going through so you have these ones that are um, essentially uh 20 feet long so if you're using five foot squares or these ones that are 10 feet long so you can create turns things like that your mini does fit through these doors fantastic all right so that's step one um oh, we're, real quick there, yeah. there's holes in the middle of those walls yeah right yep what's going on there uh I think they're just like for portholes, like you know, it's just more design, decoration, that type of stuff. It's okay. not really. A I was place wondering to if connect. there were some, yeah, like um, lights that came out or something. I mean, you could do cool stuff like that. I've seen some really cool, cool. stuff. Um, yeah, actually, uh, Saving Throw Show pointed out in chat, uh, Dom, that you don't even have to paint these, and in, in you're ready for your alien uh, oh, RPG, sure. right? <laughs> um, let's see here. So yeah, so more more of the same, which is perfect. Cause oh, yeah. Could be a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so more walls, more doors, all looking good. Here we go. Now we're, let's look at the floor. So here's something to look at. So now let's find that one that I was playing with. Doo -ba -doo. <laughs> all right. So now you see that the, on the bottom of the floors they have these little clips. Oh, so remember that bigger circle, those holes, right? Check this out, right? So that's where these all go together. Now it go together a lot better if uh, you know I I oops sorry. See. Oh, there you go. If if if, <laughs> oh, if I gotcha. if, yeah, if yeah. I'd cleaned up the edges, they'd go together a lot better. Yeah, just make it wet. Yeah, just make it wet and dirty so the aliens are ready. 
<laughs> oh, I bet you those holes are for putting security cameras. Uh, the show yeah, on the box cover. Thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, that could be too. Uh, we haven't even gone through all the little bits. Oh, oh, that's exactly what they are. There's lights and stuff. All right, cool. Oh, cool. So, so here's here's the floors. The f- I, and I like the floors. The floors look cool. Uh, you can kind of see where the five foot squares are on each of them without them being like blatantly drawn, which is one of the things right. I love about certain types of terrain. And this this is among them. Uh, they do a really good job. Like you can tell that this, you know, this is a, you know, uh, one, two, you know, three, four squares across, right? Four by two. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, awesome. I love that. That's great. All right. So here we go. Let's look at some of these. And now this is going to answer some questions. So see, see these right here? Those go with okay. those holes on the wall. Like those are little lights and stuff. Or um, as pointed out in the chat, there could be, there's some camera stuff in here. Here's like cool little vents and things. Um, oh, interesting. So you could just put whatever you want. This is a big mix and match. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah. So if you look here, like the the uh, the fans and stuff, they have those mm-hmm. little nubbins too. So you can put them in. Oh, man. There's all kinds of cool stuff in here. Oh, I like this little, this little toxic waste bin. And they give you the other <laughs> half so you can put them together. And you can just have cool. a like, toxic waste bin just to kick around. Um, oh, man, this is this is awesome. Uh, let's see here. What else? We got? Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure yet what this pool is, but uh, I think it's a portal. I think it actually probably goes like this and you go through it. Uh, sure. Very yeah. Stargate. <laughs> Very Stargate. So, oh, man. And like there's all these little boxes of like uh, like these this boxes of ammunition right there. That's kind of fun. Nice. All right. And uh, Ooh. and then digging in, you get a bunch of extras of these just in case you need them because they're small, sure. they go away. Uh, and then, of course, like, oh, here's some ideas on how to build them. So, you know, you get your little assembling book with some painted versions. So you get some ideas. And there they are. Like, you know, see the cameras? The cameras are in here. Uh, like there's, a, nice. the, you know, you look here, there's like that little computer. Um, different idea or it shows you how to actually do it, like physically do it. Um, and then there's, uh, you know, you can even oh, go multiple levels. Do you need to go higher? Go oh, multiple sure. levels. All if right. you're playing Necromunda, you kind of need that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I would love to play Necromunda. Build your, set. Build your sci-fi hive. <laughs> exactly. Oh, but, you know, here's the thing. You think that was... Let's, uh... I did think that was cool. What's happening now? <laughs> oh, no, I lost my mic or headphones. Whoa. We're going to step it up a notch. <laughs> All right, Holy so let's cow. see here. So these are more. Uh, these are these I think are even. You know, we were talking a little bit about Alien. You could totally paint these in blacks and like blue highlights, and it could totally feel like the Alien Hive. All right, let's go ahead and open oh, wow. this. Oh wow! So and then nice, nice stuff on the back. Uh, you know, showing a little bit more of that and scales and stuff. Mm-hmm. So let's pop Very this. Cool. Let's pop this bad boy open. So this is the Xenogenesis yeah. cell. Uh, I'm excited to see how how this is different from the last one, because um, that's that's really cool. I like the ability to do these different sculpts. Yeah. No, I love it. All right. So this one opens like this. So what? Here, here's here we go. Uh, let's put this box out of my way. All right. So let's take a look. So here are oh like so here's a floor. So look at that floor. Look how it's nice. you know very Geiger esque. You know, it, it, same thing with this one, right? Very mm-hmm. Geiger-esque. It looks, these are walls and floors looking good. Let's pop over to the other side. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that wall. <laughs> right? Yeah, that, that wall is good. Oh, man. Look at that. And then, like, this side of the door, like, that looks extra cool. Like, this side is cool, right? Like. Right, yeah. But but this side, it's like, oh, snap. Now 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 it's going down. Wow. Oh man. I like those doors too. That's a cool oh, shape. That. That's gorgeous. Oh man. Nice. All right. Cool. That was one sprue. Here's the next sprue. Uh I think this may be yeah, this is a duplicate sprue. So yeah. that's awesome. I like that there's duplicates in here. Uh oh, yeah, in fact, a lot to build. In fact, there's triplicates, which I think is perfect because you're just building stuff. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I actually I really Yeah, I think I'd rather have duplicates than like three different scenes because then you can create a really cohesive scene. All right. Yeah. Think- and then what was the bottom piece there? Oh, uh, that was that was just another. Uh, that was just more of the fingers. It oh. Just, oh, it's just four of the same. Oh, the more of these. Sorry. Oh, I thought there was stuff to go in the walls on that one. All right. No. <laughs> but you know what? Everybody needs 
when they're in space. Oh my gosh. It's the animal companion set. Uh, we looked at this briefly before. I don't know if this one's different, yep. but let's take a look because it's fun. And they sent us it, so... Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if this is a duplicate, guess who's getting a uh, getting some animal companion sets in the mail? <laughs> I love animal companions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. So these are slightly different color. Um, I would recommend uh, doing a nice spray paint base with these anyway. Same thing with the other ones if you're going to paint them. Don't paint directly on this plastic. Um, it doesn't feel like the WizKids plastic that you can paint directly on or the Bones plastic. It does feel gotcha. a little bit like Bones. It does feel a little bit more sturdy. So, yeah, I would do a nice base and then I would paint on top of it. Depending on what you're you're painting, if it's if you're using dark colors, go with a black. If you're using more bright colors, uh, go with a white. I personally, I would probably go gray with these ones. Um, something a little more muted. Uh, sure. it, that way, whenever they're going against the xenomorphs and you highlight with the blue and the shiny, it's just that much better. Um, anyway, so as you can see, here's a bunch of little oh, wrong thing. Here's a bunch of little bases. Uh, nice holes for you to put things in. Uh, different various body parts of your companion. So, like, yeah. there's dogs and cats and... I see a sword on there. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so this one's slight, a slightly different set as well. So, ooh, that, like, I see so sweet wings and... Uh, yeah, that looks cool. Yeah. All right, let's do another This one, one feels like it's... It's going to be a little trickier. I mean, whenever yeah. I get minis that are in pieces like this, it's hard to see what the final thing is going to be. Absolutely. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's Although, the, yeah. look at that bird right? <laughs> right in the middle. Right in the middle. Yeah. You see all the pieces for the bird right there. Oh, man. That's cool. And, and you know, and but here's the thing, which which is smart, especially with these kinds of sprues, is they do include instructions on which pieces oh, go to which. Right. Um, oh. Gotta so. get me Myrtle the turtle, and of course Geralt the wolf. <laughs> yeah, but th don't miss out on Roblin the goblin. Roblin the goblin. <laughs> Cecil the weasel. These are good names. Oh, good work. They really are. <laughs> Snark the dragon. Dexter the dog. Oh man, and uh, I just want the Robo Rooster. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh Absolutely. man. Oh wow, those are great. Right, those are great. But you know, <laughs> you there's. What's Wait, one more thing. What? <laughs> what oh my would, gosh. What would any Xeno lair be without a Xeno dragon? Uh, this is, I mean, this is, I'm, you know, I, I, I actually, I really like the blue p color on this. I wonder mm -hmm. if that's the, the color of the sprue once we get in here. We'll see. Um, That'd be nice. But once again, like color of the sprue, it's not going to matter. With these plastics, I think it's going to be good to go ahead and do a nice base. Right, yeah, this holy crap is this what is this Gundam? Right? Yeah. Oh man. Alright, so oh they're they're gray, oh my not gosh, painted. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Alright, so here's here's some oh, uh, wow. here's some little bits. Uh oh there's a nice oh I like that base. Look at that base. That's it's, a cool base. It's a very Xeno-y. Oh man, those mm -hmm. wings are great. Oh wow, so gorgeous. Yes, look at that tail. There it is. <laughs> oh, right wow that's perfect <laughs> that's exactly what you want um oh, somebody was asking about an owl let's see if there was an owl in this set um well we got gustav the eagle um let's see here uh oh yeah uh paulo the owlo oh right. yeah cool. all right let's let's take a picture let's see what he looks like to see if we can get him up here uh, let's see if that'll focus. Probably not. Um, <laughs> anyway, there we go. Paolo the Owlo. There is an owl. Absolutely. Um, so let's take a quick look here. So Xenomorph Assembly, uh, you get your nice little guide, uh, which is perfect, especially when you get, when you get big minis wow. like this. When you get big minis like this, uh, sometimes it's really important to have the guide just because you're like, what am I doing uh, with yeah. these things? Um, I didn't realize the tail was going to go through the base. That's yeah. very cool. Right? I mean, the tail wow. The tail is, is the, right? That's what connects to the base. Mm -hmm. So, oh, good. Goodness. Oh, that's so good. That's great. That's amazing. Right? Good instructions, too. Product. Oh, put them wings on. Yes. Whoa. Yes. So good. All right. Um, well, and... Uh, I'm going to love these and squeeze these and hug these forever. 
<laughs> I hope that means paint and put them together because I, I would love to see these someday. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, I yeah. I'm 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 still working on the last set too, honestly. Um but yeah, no, those are so good. I yeah. I I love these minis. They're just they're fantastic. Um and I feel very fortunate that uh, you know, that that these folks let's uh let's say, you know, these folks at Dungeons and Lasers are very gracious to send me these to to check out and and share with all of you. So oh wow. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, that was exciting. I didn't know right? what was gonna happen exactly. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh so uh, you know, I, I hope you all enjoyed the first stab at an unboxing here live on the Albert Soup Show. Uh, I hope to do some more, uh, and uh, I hope that worked out. So uh, if you guys enjoyed that, let us know. Uh, you can let us know in the chat. You can let us know in the Discord. Make sure and join our Discord. You can let us know in the YouTube comments, because we also have uh, YouTube. And you can find us on the Saving Throw YouTube channel uh, at soup.fyi slash YouTube. Uh, you can also find the uh, Saving Throw Discord at soup.fyi slash Discord. Uh, those, both of those will send you there. And that's where you guys can ask us questions about these minis. You can give us suggestions on things you'd like us to see to review. Uh, you know, all that stuff. Of course, we always broadcast live every Sunday. Well, nearly every Sunday on Twitch at uh, <laughs> twitch.tv slash saving throw show. And uh, yeah, we do that every every Sunday at like two. Yeah, <laughs> we do. We do. We do. And it's good. It's good. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. A lot of news. A lot of that was a great review. That was really exciting. Um, I feel, I feel. What's the word? Um, hmm. Full. No. <laughs> Satiated. 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 Yeah. There yeah. we go. <laughs> oh man. Very very cool. So. Um. Well. Uh, what's a? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. I think other than that, uh, if you guys have enjoyed the show, make sure to like, follow, subscribe to the Patreon. Um. Uh, Join the Discord, follow us on socials, do all the things. Yeah. Uh, let us know what you guys think. Um, and before, I guess, I guess we're kind of pretty much wrapping up. So wrapping up a little bit early today. A little early. A little early, but uh, yeah, Rich, yeah. Uh, tell us, tell us, tell the world about where we can find you on the internet in this. Uh, next my week. goodness. <laughs> um, still running games for kids at the Academy of Adventures. So if you know any kids out there, ages 11 to 15, uh, who are looking for a D&D &D adventure, send them my way. Um, we are getting started with our first season on, gosh, September 6th, right? Labor Day is the start of that. Um, and our first adventure is going to be the, the season of Fortune's Folly. You're headed out to this small town that just everything seems to be going wrong. Um, we'll see if uh, if our kids can solve that problem or not. Um, what about me especially as an adult? When luck is against you. I would like to solve that problem. Can I Well, I think up? what... Um, okay, hold on. It's, uh, are you under a curse? I might be. <laughs> By, um, <laughs> I guess it would be Tamora, maybe? <laughs> That's kind of what we're looking at here. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, very excited. I'm excited for this this whole season. The second one is going to uh, involve a haunted forest. Ooh. Perfect. Yeah. Um, you know, good uh, good Halloween style time. Uh, and then just in time for winter, we're starting with uh, the, what is that? The Cinder Catalyst. Um, we're going to be headed out to a volcano uh, that is freezing over and they need to figure out how to fix that. So oh, that's awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. Sweet. Um, other, than, other than that, um, yeah, keep checking out Flamecraft because that's pretty cool. Um, do I have anything else big coming out right now? I don't think that I do. I think it's a slow week. Otherwise, I've got jury duty this week. So you can see me in the, I don't know, in a courtroom somewhere. <laughs> I, I I have stories about jury duty, but I, I will not disclose them on air. Uh, you can follow Fair. you can follow me all over the Internet. So I am DJ Pirate Rabbits. Uh, I stream on Twitch uh, doing DJ stuff a few times a week. Uh, my primary night where it's kind of a big deal is Wednesday night at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time where we watch silent movies and we listen to me DJ house music. Uh, it's almost like MST3K with house music. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's where <laughs> you can find me. It's it's a ton of fun. So um, I think that's it. Is that everything? I think so. I think well, so. I think we did it. All right. Well, right? in that case, uh, you know, turn your crock pot to warm and uh, keep that soup simmering. We'll be back next week. Thanks. See so you much. next week.